Hello and welcome to the Art Department Podcast. My name is Jan Orschel and with me is again Emmanuel Schill. And today we are already at episode 18 and yes. the topic is interviews. Our top 10, whatever number you want, tips for interview techniques that we have learned through our experience with doing interviews ourselves with various companies and also giving advice to other people doing interviews, training them. And um, yeah, we wanted to, to share some of the, the tips and tricks that we have used. And um, I think we want to get right into it. And um, yeah. I think the, the first step for, for an interview is always when either you maybe get contacted for, for a job or you, uh, you have maybe made an application to a company you really like and um, they are now reaching out to you to do an interview and um, I mean what what would you recommend is the first thing to do when you actually have an interview scheduled I think the first thing is preparation I mean you know hands down that is usually uh, most of the legwork is done in preparation mm -hmm. uh, some people interview really well at the interview but mm. most people need a lot of preparation uh, so and yeah. by pre preparation I, I mean a lot of knowing you know what you bring to the table your non-negotiables is very right, important right. Uh, because and, and what i mean by that is that a lot of people uh may work better alone mm -hmm. or they may work better as a group and these are things you need to know no, there's no right or wrong right so it's but you need to know this so it's yeah. about and, knowing uh, yourself right yeah knowing yourself and also knowing if you have any special needs because obviously you know I'm coming from a, a standpoint of, of a disability. Right. So I need to communicate that to people that, hey, this is what I need. Right, this is right. what needs to happen f in order for me to work mm, true. Uh, with you. Uh, and uh, knowing what you bring to the table, that's super important, right? I mean, because uh, not only are, are, you, are they interviewing you, but they're also interviewing you to see what you can bring. Uh, right. So that's know. basically, I mean, would you, would you say that you have to kind of work on a sales pitch for yourself to, in order to communicate your strength and maybe also your weaknesses, um, accurately to, to a potential employer or. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the preparation, right? Is by saying, okay, what am I applying for? Mm. What are my skills that, that, that will help uh, show that I'm really good for that job. Right. Uh, what are things I don't know to keep in your back pocket or things I don't want to do? Right. And to know that, uh, uh, you, you know, of course, your biggest strengths is usually going to be what you bring to the table. Right. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I think that part of it is, is, is really important. The, the other part um, is know the company. Oh, yeah, of course, like, it's the other part. Yeah. I mean, if you that's part of preparing, right? So yeah. you need to prep. OK, you, you just, you know, going to have an interview with, let's say, Blizzard. You need to know what they're about, exactly. what their culture is. Right. I mean, you're probably going to know somebody who's worked there. You right. need to find out because if you don't, then they're going to think you're not very serious about the job. And right. you probably don't really want it that bad yeah i mean you, know you should I mean? I mean that's a good point so i mean so uh, just to to summarize it right so we have a two-part preparation here we have the preparation on on your own side of of yourself right so what what do you bring to the table and 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 do you think do you think it's it's uh, important that you're you're particularly eloquent about your own skill set i mean you don't need to you don't need to bullshit anyone about it i think but it, it, putting putting uh, your skill set um explaining it properly to to a, a potential client how important do you think that is so that, like that's in terms part of, of the, pure communication yeah so you know of course pure communication uh, as a you know and we'll get to it we'll get into it when we're actually at the interview you know, okay. <laughs> part, but, but no, but I mean, I, I think it's important because you, you know, you, the prep is where everything happens. So let's say you, uh, for, and this is rare, but a lot of people, uh, that are very, uh, they can speak very freely mm. and they can spin very quick, you know, with their mind right. and they can really think about, you know, things on the fly. That's yeah, great. On, yeah. Right. But it'll still help you to practice. Of course, whatever yeah. you're going to, you know, like a mock interview with a friend, it doesn't matter how 
stupid that may sound, but the the fact that he lets you sort of go through your material is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is especially for the people who are more introverted, mm. more practice will give you that confidence right. because it's the confidence that's going to, going to come through in a lot of interviews. And if you Definitely. don't have confidence, it's going to show, but for, for, for an introvert, how, what are you going to do? A lot of them are scared yeah. or have a fear of actually talking to somebody new. And for them, it's actually very unfair because mm. they don't interview well. Doesn't mean they're not good people or their oh, work's yeah, not good. But I mean, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, it's. I think um, a lot of it comes down to. I mean, introvert versus extrovert will be will be an important um, divider here between different kinds of people and how how well they talk to strangers and everything. Yeah, but I think the the introverts can really do that with just practice right you just yeah. have to so repeat it multiple practice. times and yeah. i mean exactly the yeah. one way how to get better at interviews is doing more interviews and i mean not ev not everybody will have a chance to do a lot of interviews like real interviews so i think the the mock interviews actually do present a, a real opportunity here to practice that and how i mean maybe the other the other side does not have the, the right knowledge i mean if it's if it's your partner if it's your i don't know your grandma or whatever um, she will not have the industry knowledge but at least she will be able to get a feeling of, of how you present yourself how you what kind of impression you make on other people yeah i, I think it's also just having being able just to go through your material exactly and, so and, and to have it mm. sort of in the back of your head you know like you already know exactly, what to say exactly. and even for the extroverts or, or the people who think they're really good mm. Uh, that will ha still help you. Of course, of course. It will make yeah. you even better. Yeah, exactly. So I think that is one of the things that mm. I think is important. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, and this happened to my friend recently, is uh, especially now that you have a lot of Zoom interviews, yeah. have your material prepared. Like if you're going to have, let's say you have a bunch of stuff that you, uh, you, know, you drew and then uh, your paintings, uh, movies, any whatever movie files, and then maybe you you're gonna talk about let's say your you know your biking you know, let's say you've done this or that you know whatever you never know when they say well just show me yeah, um, that's true. because that's what happened to my friend and they said show me and he goes okay because we actually had talked about this I said well, prep your stuff so you can just pull it up sure mm. ex and he pulled it up and it was like okay first of all it shows that you're not bullshitting yeah right I mean it's just you know you're talking about it and the other thing is you're actually sharing. Mm. And and I think for me, I tend to look at interviews as not like um, strategy. Mm -hmm. I look at more like honesty. Right. It's right. just it's so important just to be truthful. Uh, and I think that brings you confidence because you're just being you. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to I know a lot of people like to have like the strategy like, OK, you know, I'm going to, you know, and, and it's good to know. Mm. But I think in the end being honest with yourself and being honest with them is going to be more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just going to talk yourself into a corner. So let me let me just quickly uh, mention the other side of the preparation before we move on to the next point. Um, so the, the preparation, of course, for yourself is important, but also research into the company. I mean, I, I do research into the company that I'm applying for, that I'm getting, getting asked to interview with, um, that you know a little bit about the company history, where they are located, um, what the, the, the job description entails, of course, and also who is the person you're talking to. Um, and you can, you can check their name on LinkedIn or, or Google it or and read up on the games or the movies that the studio has been producing and the kind of areas that um, they, they, they seem to be interested in. So you get a better idea of, of um, that you don't talk about just random things, but it's all very focused on on that job, on that company, on that person. Well, one more thing on the prep yeah. is, uh, and, and I don't know if this is prep, but it, it, it could be partly prep, is that uh, um, usually, I mean, I have it set for later as a, as a point, mm. but we can actually bring that in. Usually some of these interviews are going to be multiple hour, multiple people interviews. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, what you can do is request uh, a list of who's going to be there Mm -hmm. and usually they'll send it out to you anyway mm -hmm. they'll say uh they may not say the name it may say oh this you know this hour you're going to interview with 3d artists this hour you're going to interview with 
you know, creative director, this, you know, they'll let you know. But if it's going to be a long, multiple people interview, you can ask who's who it is you're going to be interviewing with so that you can prepare for it. Exactly. It's, exactly. it's important because if you're talking to like my friend, he went through a four hour interview. Right. And wow. that's wow. very, no, that's common. Mm. Like if you interview at Pixar or any yeah. of these places, it's going to be a long mm. one. And, and it's, it's multiple, um, you know, like you, you get one and you do well, you go to the next interview. Exactly. A so yeah, it, it's not necessarily the first one, right? The first one might be the just second like an one H was four hours. Yeah. The, the first one is usually just like an HR screening kind of thing to weed I out. I think it the, depends on the company. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and maybe also how, how serious they are. Right. Um, yeah. Maybe. Because on this one, th my friend interview with basically the creative director. Wow. Right away. That's the first the step. Yeah. Right away. Wow. First one. And that was like maybe an hour. And then the second one was like three different teams, Bloody but they yeah. sent him a list. Mm. And if they don't send you a list, you can ask, ask nicely. Yeah. But you can ask like, what kind of people am I going to be talking to? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's good to know. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's a very good point. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. It does matter who you're talking to. Right. So if, if whether it's like it a, does matter, an, yeah. an HR person that is just trying to just, uh, kind of like it doesn't it doesn't make sense to talk to an hr person about anything art related because they are the mainly just there to to uh, uh, make sure that you're Get not crazy you, yeah. or uh, <laughs> that that you actually fit the description in terms of like experience uh, location and sometimes even salary expectations because if, if any of those are red flags then it, it no matter how good your art is then it, it might not work Right. So they yeah. are kind of there like they, they are usually the HR is usually preparing a, a list of candidates that then will be taken further. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, it also makes makes a difference. Are you talking to like the the art director, the art lead in a big company? Are you talking maybe in a maybe you're interviewing with a small company and you're actually talking with the CEO directly? Right. That can mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. as well. And and uh, I mean, do you, do you have any kind of different strategies of, of how to talk to these people differently or anything you would say like, okay, this is not a conversation you... Sh like for me, it's usually like you don't talk art with like an HR person or you don't, you don't talk salary with an art director, right? Because these people are not responsible for these kind of things. Yeah, so the thing is, you know, so the, I, I want to jump to this. The, you know, what is really the point of the interview is mm. to get to know you right and for you to get to know them right uh and and i i feel like for me i first of all that on that part i don't really have a lot of strategy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because i i feel like uh, i kind of go with the flow on that one because sometimes you talk to an hr person that actually understands art well okay. then you can be honest yeah, yeah i think it depends but of course in general you don't talk to uh you know like a modeler about uh matte painting i mean it doesn't make a lot of sense yeah. but i think it depends on on what they're capable of and what the feel of it is mm -hmm. uh but i think it's important to know in, in an interview that um you there's not just them interviewing you it also you interviewing them mm. good point and that yeah. puts a whole new dynamic because it takes the power and control away a, at least a little bit because yeah. a lot of people are scared of the interview because they're always thinking oh i want this job and yeah 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 <laughs> no, it's true. And, it's true. And, you know, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's an it's an important point, um, and I, I always make it a rule that I mean, if you have a lot of, uh, there will be a point at any interview where they're going to be like, "Oh, do you have any questions for us?" And I think, I think the the person you inter like the, your your counterpart, I think uh, in the company, they really appreciate if you show genuine interest and that they get a feeling that you've really prepared and that you really want mm. to know more about the company yes. about them about the job if you're just like oh no i'm 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 okay then that is not yeah, yeah, really no. a good impression and, right and some very simple questions is like you said how long have you been at the company yeah that will spark a, a you know a good conversation or yeah. you know how how does one succeed at this job that you know you're hiring for yeah. what would you know like just questions that people can kind of answer and you can get a feel for who they are exactly. as a company yeah. m even more because you're interviewing them too yeah and you want to know uh 
what this is all about and if you're going to work here for a while yeah then you need to know that and i think a lot of people uh also um I, this is my own mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. is don't negotiate on the first or yeah, yeah like yeah. interviews are interviews they're not negotiations mm. uh you should never accept anything if anything if anything's offered to you at that moment you always say sure let me think about that exactly because you exactly. need to think about it yeah at that moment you er oh yeah job's good yeah but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah don't agree <laughs> don't to know anything you don't i mean yeah. uh, everything will be put in black and white later but um yeah it's it's a good it's a i mean it's a good point to um not agree to anything at this point when when everything is still very fresh in your mind but it's also yeah. i mean at the same time it's also important though to to kind of get a feeling for what the next steps are like uh, both sides should be clear about what the what the follow-up steps are for both sides so that you agree like okay okay please send me oh like whatever is discussed in the interview but then at the end you're like okay i'm gonna send you a follow-up email with my salary expectations or i'm gonna send you a follow-up with more details about yeah. this and that right so, so that you're both clear yeah. on what's gonna happen next yeah a lot of people are going to be um they're gonna have a hard time with this one because i think at least at least for a lot of uh first-time interviewers mm. uh they're gonna be like Oh, I don't know if I, you know, like it's scary to ask for these things. Mm. So I, I would just say, you know, at the very least, just say, what is the next step? Yeah. Or you can just, uh, just make it ask. simple. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. But I mean, if you say, well, you know, here's my salary, you know, like, like a lot of people mm. wouldn't want, they're scared to actually say, oh, I'm going to email you my salary range because. I mean, of course, I mean, th that was just an example. That's not, that's yeah, yeah, not no, usually I'm, what yeah. happens. That's usually the last step, the money, right? That's yeah, usually that's the last, the last step. step. Yeah, yeah. But I'm um, just, yeah. just so you are not like, sometimes interviews just, they just stop. And then you're like, mm. uh, and it becomes awkward. Yeah, yeah. It just, especially in the beginning, it just kind of stops mm. and both sides don't know what to say anymore. And it's kind of like mm -hmm. awkward. And then like, I don't know. And then you maybe finished. And then two weeks later, you're like wondering like, so like, what's happening right it, it stresses yeah. you unnecessarily so if at the end of the interview you can just you can just simply say like well thank you so much for your time and it was a pleasure talking to you um i'd love to hear more and um so like um could you could you kind of lay out to me what, what are the what what are the next steps and then maybe the other side will just simply say oh we're gonna interview a few other candidates and we will mm, get yeah. back to you within mm -hmm. um maybe two weeks yeah, time so, so you if yeah you so you if know, you didn't yeah. if you didn't hear mm. back from us feel free to send me a follow-up yeah. email blah 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 right so that's usually yeah. how it goes yeah. whatever whatever question you ask them it, it doesn't have to come um from a from a point of like a demand or anything it's just a genuine a genuine point of interest of of you you want a bit of clarity right i mean that yeah. that's all really there's, there's no no that's mm. that's definitely great mm. um and i think one of the things i put down is just you know be honest yeah um, that's that's and that's and, I, and, and and i know that sounds you know whatever but i mean be honest meaning be honest with yourself and them mm -mm -mm. because if they say to you hey uh so this job involves like a lot of rigging. How do you feel about that? Yeah. And you say, great, because you just want a job. Yeah. But you hate rigging. Yeah. That's because in the end, you probably are not going to last there very long. Yeah. So you've, you know, really think about that's that's why, you know, we're saying also never commit to anything in the first or, you know, or in any interview, give yourself some time to sleep on it so that mm. you can really go, do I want to rig? and yeah. if you do great but if you don't mm. don't just say oh yeah 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 no problem i can do it because a lot of people will just offer up their skills yeah and say oh yeah i've done that and then but they hate it mm. but they just because they want the job yeah. you know yeah. and uh, i don't know how do you feel yeah, that? Hon honesty is a, is a tricky thing honesty in interviews right i mean of course i mean you need to be honest with yourself like you said and honest with the company in terms of what your skill set is and whatever but there are there are many i think tricky answers and uh, many tricky situations in an interview where where you are where your honesty and everything will be tested so one of the things is like you said right like mm. you don't 
you want the job or maybe there's a you're in a position where you need the job right so mm -hmm. where do mm -hmm. we where do we stand with with honesty but there's also going to be situations like let me think i mean let's say a company you work f like you got it let, let, let's let, let's presume there's a company that you're kind of on the fence about like you're not you're not really super interested in the job but you you think it could be a good opportunity and maybe you're strapped for mm. cash and you're like i haven't i haven't like heard back from any of the 50 companies that i've sent an interview like that mm -hmm. i applied to and this is the first company and i'm like mm. six months like reducing my savings or whatever and i really need this job and the company is like is like okay it's okay and they ask you like so so what do you think what do you think about our games or what do you, what do you think about this product we made i mean th that will happen and they're like mm -hmm. so what did you think about it and your honest your honest opinion to yourself is that this product they made is shit and what do, what do you say <laughs> what, then what what do you say you just said it <laughs> i mean are you going to tell for them me personally I, no I, but for me i would so if it's if it's any job that i want I would never t tell somebody's game is shit yeah. uh, because that's just my opinion. But I would say that I would always think, uh, first of all, I need to do my homework, right? Yeah, so I need course. to know what game they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But let, let's say it's a game I don't like. Mm. I think I don't like it. But there's always going to be some redeeming factor mm. on anything. Mm. So I don't have to lie. I can say, oh, I like the artistic value or the production value. Mm, That's mm -hmm. vague as shit. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean but, but, but it's a positive thing to say. And people are like, oh, okay. I mean, unless they go, what exactly, like what character do you, like, you know, then I'll say, um, I don't remember the character, but I really like this kind of art. And I think this was a, a, mm. a great job. And I love to add, you know, be an addition to that team yeah. uh, doing that kind of art. But I mean, you can make it really vague as well. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I think, uh, yeah. you know, for companies that you're on the fence about, mm. obviously for the games you know and you love, it's easy. I right? think it's it's the best thing here is to be diplomatic, not exactly, and maybe always lead with the, like a positive statement first. And if they drill deeper, always if they if they yeah. drill deeper, then I think you need to kind of get a get a feel no, so for I'm, the for the so person on the other end. Oh yeah, go ahead. Right. So so I mean positive always mm. but if there is something to say then you can say well maybe i would have uh done that that way yeah it's not a negative mm. way i uh, think it's uh, it's it's maybe good to to have a general positive statement and then maybe follow that up with like but personally like you say like oh i think the art style was really cool but personally i don't care too much for this type of i don't know gameplay i don't know you can you can you See, can make that kind uh, of so, statement. I think so. For me, I mean, I, I'll, I'll because mm. I'm a little bit different okay. on that side. I, I would say I wouldn't say that because anything to bring up a negative is a negative. So mm. I, I would probably just say, here's what I think, um, the positive thing, and then on the gameplay side, I wouldn't, I would just not say anything. Well, no, not say anything unless, yeah, okay. unless they said, what do you think of the gameplay? Then I say, well. I don't really like that kind of mm -hmm. game because that's not my preference. Um, so I can't really make a yeah. comment on that. But, you know, I mean, it's it's a something you're on the fence. You, you're going mm -hmm. to have to be a little bit yeah, more diplomatic yeah. and yeah. positive. It's always, I mean, people can appreciate enthusiasm, positivity, mm. and confidence. Exactly. And I think, you know, as long as, and, and while we're on the subject, because we're kind of jumping on the list, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's fine. But as long as we're on the subject, one of my big points is do not badmouth your old companies mm. or the people you used to work for mm. because that shows a lot about who you are. Yeah. Uh, like don't say, oh, yeah, I used to work for such and such company. Oh, it's crap. You know, be in the thinking of maybe that, you, you know, you're going to make their company sound better because, mm, 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 mm. you know, because a lot of these people are competing companies. Yeah. But I say just... You know, or, oh, I work with so-and-so and, yeah, he wasn't a good boss. You know, like, don't say stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, because I know people who, who have done it and it, it is definitely going to bite you in, in mm. the ass. I mean, sometimes they will even trick you into bad-mouthing other companies just to maybe see how they 
how you how, would you, how yeah. you would respond to that right yeah, yeah, so yeah, that yeah. will happen <laughs> as well that's um, happened to me so many times yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. ask me such and such a person they go well what do you think about that person Even, and yeah and you're thinking oh man like i didn't let's say that person i didn't really like but i was like well you know uh it was a good experience but i think you know i it was time to move on yeah exactly uh, right. it, it, you know it's a positive way and he and he goes yeah yeah i mean he and i are like best friends <laughs> like thank god you didn't you know yeah, bad yeah, mouth yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no but it's, it's but because there's yeah. and there's no point to do mm. that that's yeah it's not like the place you can you can yeah. talk about these kind of things with your buddies over a beer exactly but they exactly. have no place in a in a business interaction right uh, no i mean the thing is right it does not mean by any by any means it, it, it's it's not about like bullshitting each other I think I think that's even worse. I mean, when when you're both just lying yeah. through your teeth and trying to make yourself sound um, like the Wizard of Oz and the company is like um, the best place mm. to work for uh, in the world, um, I think it, that's also not the right way to go about this. But again, you can be open, you can be honest, you can be respectful um, and nice to each other, because that's I don't know. That's how humans are supposed to interact right yeah. you're not supposed to sh and, throw and, shit and at definitely each other. yeah and and ha on that you know have good etiquette you know mm. like be polite i mean th these sounds very yeah. like oh my god i you know how why would you even need to say that no there's a lot of people who don't realize that yeah um y how you come across is really important so you you know how you write an email to them to follow up oh yeah it, that that could help you get the next you know the second interview or not that's because a basic you write it mm. yeah i mean a lot of people they don't know how to write it yeah or uh, they don't write one they, at all they don't write one at all uh so th there's a lot of this stuff but i mean i think it's just never lie so that's my thing is like be honest always yeah, yeah, yeah. just be honest and positive uh, and if you can't find anything positive to say, <laughs> say it. <laughs> that maybe it's not the not the right interview, the right company for you. <laughs> maybe not. But I'll tell you this: if you interviewed well, and they liked you, but it wasn't the right company, you know what? Because they could easily recommend you to another place. Exactly. They could easily recommend you to another department. That doesn't mean that interview was just shot. It just means that that person goes, "Wow, I really." appreciate that guy's honesty and he was positive but he said hey you know i That's don't do really rigging good point. Yeah. um but hey okay he doesn't do rigging but then uh, there might be something opening up there and i like this person yeah. so why don't i just you know it really comes it's how you come across and i feel like this is all points back to preparation you gotta you know because you yeah. have to feel confident i mean that but just mm. Just, just don't lie yeah like you're yeah, saying yeah 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 <laughs> i mean it, but it's such a good point that you say that you never know what the future will bring so i mean this hr guy might be like um like oh this was a really i had a really good time talking to them and you have to imagine that i mean um hr has to go through a lot of interviews right they do this day in day out and if you can make the process for them a little bit easier a little bit more fun um then or just a little, mo little bit more pleasant by yeah sticking to your etiquette be respectful be polite then i think that counts for a lot and i mean the hr people don't stay forever at one company so they might go out and have have beers with their hr buddies i don't know or they might go to a different company and they remember like oh like i remember this guy um wasn't a good fit back then but maybe we need somebody now and then maybe they they remember you and and, and uh, ask you ask you back that will definitely yeah. the chances are high that this will happen if you if you behave yourself right and i mean towards the whole mm -hmm. etiquette thing right yeah like once the interview is done just write a nice follow-up email um with proper email <laughs> formatting and everything being polite and thanking them just purely yeah no hey time, dude right? and None of yeah that. and and just like <laughs> just spread a bit more positivity right because i can tell you that a lot of people don't don't do as something as basic as a follow-up and it doesn't have to be you shouldn't say anything like um like an hour later like so oh yeah please get back to me soon kind of thing you you don't you don't do that right it's just yeah, purely yeah, yeah. an appreciation for what you've for, for, the, for the thing you just talked even if there's no specific need for like um a, a, a fixed follow-up and i mean since we were at, at the topic also of of well zoom 
and and Skype interviews or, or just interviews you can't do in person because I mean maybe the in, the company is in a different country or just purely because mm. of the the COVID situation. Um, please don't wear pajamas or anything, right? And don't don't hide like don't like do not not activate your camera. It's very important to have even if you're staring at a webcam to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, if the other yeah. person doesn't turn on the, the, the video or whatever, it doesn't matter. Like you look proper, don't have like crazy stuff in the background. Um, <laughs> make sure that you tell your family that, okay, at that, at that time I will have a conversation, an interview with that person. So can you keep the kids in check or can you not do anything that's like super noisy? Um, I mean, sometimes it just happens uh, because you can't control everything, but just make sure that you have this time where you're concentrated, where you're quiet, you don't wear mm -hmm. a pajama, you wear pants. So, I mean, <laughs> and, basi basically yeah. is take it seriously as if you were sitting at in the, an in the, interview. In the same room, yeah. That is exactly what you're doing mm. for women. You know, if you do your makeup, hair for men, your hair whatever you need to do whatever you need to do to feel presentable mm. that's what you do because exactly. this is a situation where your everything about you tells them who you are yeah exactly so if you want them to think that you're a slob go for it mm -mm -mm. but <laughs> that's what they're gonna think <laughs> and, and and they and people will be like mm, it's a slob okay so I might have a couple points down already you know for that person because they they might think well you're not even taking this seriously exactly right so that's, that's a, a great point. point. I, mm. I think that's definitely something. Another thing is to listen, mm. right? Good you put point. that down. I think it's a good point. Listen, don't just, for some people, uh, so I am the, uh, one of those people uh, that used to interview and talk their ears off. <laughs> so I'm, I was one of those people, but for me, luckily, um, I could always find a way to sort of engage um, but I think more importantly now is to have a balance and really listen mm. to what they're trying to tell you. And there's nothing more frustrating than somebody trying to say something and they keep getting cut off. Like right uh, now. I, I know that we have noticed that a lot in the in our while we started recording the podcast and people actually pointed it out on both sides that sometimes I don't let you finish. Sometimes you yeah, cut yeah. me off and. I mean, it's it's as it's the simplest thing actually to I mean to say like just listen and then you think oh so I just listen for a bit and then I'll talk again. But for me, this point is actually the hardest point of everything that we've talked about. It's, it's incredibly difficult to really listen and try to understand what the other side is asking, uh, what they're saying, right, and then continue the conversation in a in a in a productive manner it's really really difficult and i think one of the points that uh, i think you may maybe uh, added it to to our list but it's like don't just keep on babbling like i do all the time listen to what they're asking and answer their question be short be concise not monosyllabic right not just like yes no right but don't don't keep off, don't keep on wandering off in some other direction that they don't, didn't even ask about, right? So yes, that's absolutely yeah. important, and I, and I I get that you know on a lot of Zoom interviews it's, it's going to be difficult because yeah. it's hard to know when to come in. You know? Yeah, and sometimes it's there's a time delay between when somebody talks, yeah. right? And if you do, just say, "Oh, excuse me, sorry, exactly. uh, go ahead." You know, you can. Always just because you're interested, you want yeah, to know exactly. what they have to say. And don't forget, this is your information gathering. You mm. want to know what they're about mm. because, and this goes on to another point where I really agree with what you had put down was that how you are treated in your interview tells you a lot about the place you're going to work at. Yeah, exactly. Or potentially work at. Because if you, if they treat you like crap and they treat you like, hey, are you, uh, you know, on the first interview, they're already asking uh, you about work, working 80 hours a week. That might be a problem. Um, yeah. Or if they're talking to you rudely or, or condescending or, or anything that puts you, mm. uh, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel like a little weird. You need to look at whether you want to work at a company that exactly. has a culture like that. Yeah. Um, because you put that down, what do you? Ha yeah, has I mean, that it, it comes it comes back down to actually what you said at the very beginning of 
it, it is as much uh, as much as they are interviewing you you are also interviewing them right and as much as your your behavior and what you say is a reflection or can tell them a lot about you and how it will be like working together with you and for them to judge if you fit into a team and and, and all these sort of things that they need to find out about you um at the same time you you need to find out about them is this the right company for me like like uh, you read all these reports of like crunch and sexism and all these kind of things inside a company and you're interviewing with them and you're like i mean maybe you maybe you're already getting that vibe from the person you're interviewing with and then i mean that's really like a, a red flag and um that that just happens right um it, it can happen a lot and then sometimes you have to ask yourself like am i okay with this like um or maybe also on the other side like you you hear all these reports about these things happening in a company and it seems to be like this is coming to light more and more often and then you're doing an interview with this company but the hr person is like super nice and you you don't get this vibe at all would you actually at some point during the entire interview process bring this kind of topic up mm. i mean i personally let's say it was a a company that had a lot of uh this problems on the media yeah, or whatever yeah. let's say it's a a, a, a sex of a sexism issue and i it, i had a problem with it i because i'm seasoned and because i have a lot of confidence and because i've you know been through a lot of jobs mm. i would mm. ask because where i go next is very important to me mm. i don't have years i don't want to waste years at a company that I find out is, you know, is really racist or sexist or, mm. you know, had some issues like that. So if I heard that, I would ask, but positively mm. in a way where I have seen some of these yeah, issues yeah. in the media. Can you tell me more about the culture as it pertains to that problem? Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. Um, because I don't want to make any judgments, uh, you know, from media. Exactly, and exactly. I think that's fair. If you ask like that, it's a positive question, mm. and and it invites conversation. Exactly, and then you can see how they answer it. Because if they say, "Oh, how dare you? What what are you talking about?" Then whoa, okay, maybe. Yeah, if it's it, 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 but yeah, it's 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 a tricky thing, right? I mean, again, it, it can't come from a point of of <laughs> you accusing them of anything, yeah. um, but also like. I think yeah, it needs to be. I think if you're more senior and if you like, if, let's say if you if you're going into like a art director position or something like that, and um, I think it's really fair to to clarify if there are really a lot of reports on on that, right? If 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 it's Absolutely. if it's, I mean, the the sad thing is that in this industry, yes, you 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 work hard, right? And and there's gonna be times where you have to work a bit longer hours and everything but if it's like reported in the media that this company is pushing like 80 100 hour weeks like cons like all throughout the year then there there are some problems but yeah i think yeah maybe and if you ask them mm. and they say mm. yeah we do that then you have to think to yourself oh do i want this job yeah exactly and i mean it's it's uh it's uh it's also um what did i want to say like i think some people come out of a like especially if you're younger and if you're more inexperienced you come maybe from a position where you think like oh maybe the company would get an idea that i i don't like to work hard if you bring up these yeah, kind yeah. of issues and i think you have to be um a bit more careful maybe like what can a like how, what would you recommend somebody who's really junior um and it's maybe his first job or maybe they're jumping like they're jumping for the first time to a different company. Like what would you recommend them to do? Um, well, I mean, I think I think everything that we're saying is I'm actually basing it more towards the okay. the the junior person, because uh, I think people who have been through, you know, many years, they'll have a, a good idea of how to interview. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I, I think this is really mainly for people starting out. Mm. Uh, but I still think that, you know, you need to stand firm to what you believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as long as you're doing it in a respectful way, because yeah. I, I really feel like, you know, you just because you're junior doesn't mean that you're not a human being. And it doesn't mean that you're not somebody who who wants or doesn't want certain things. And maybe you are like, hey, 80 hour weeks, I'm down. Mm -hmm. I'm good with it. Yeah. And that's OK. But you just want information on that interview. Right. You want to know. 
and you want to ask it in a way where it's not just you drilling them and it's yeah. not them drilling you. It's just, it's a conversation. It's something for you to figure out who you guys are and how you're going to work together. Like they, they're going to ask you tough questions too, you know, like how do you deal with conflict and all that kind of stuff. And you mm. need to have answers uh, because they want to know, Hey, how do you deal with it? And at, at any moment of your interview, if you act confrontational, yeah. it's going to go against you Yeah, exactly. because who's going to want to work with that. So yeah, I mean the mo main thing is for more junior people. I, mm -mm -mm. at least that's how I was structuring. Cause I think, you know, like for you, like you already know how to interview. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but you, you also have to see, right? There's a, um, maybe, maybe because we're freelancing, we, we, we are just more, more attuned to, to talk to a lot of strangers, a lot of new people we have not worked with. Yeah, we've had a lot with, of practice. Right? So we have yeah. to, we have <laughs> to use our, our experience a lot more. Whereas like, just imagine like somebody who, who, um, maybe got his first job out of out of art school or university and then or even even out of high school and then they've never changed companies for the next 15 years or whatever right and they maybe like in yeah. their mid thir mid to late 30s and maybe the company is shutting down right because i mean it's the game and like for example the game industry or, it, or anything that it, the companies are constantly reorganizing closing down mm -hmm. reforming mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. a different unit with the same people but like maybe you're like well, a, hopefully in the late thirties, so you, you have to do the first interview in like fifteen years, right? You don't. I mean, you just don't have any experience, and it can be very difficult. Oh, yeah. I think it can be very difficult. Well, I mean, it's just the same as as the junior guy because you know you ha at interviewing, they're actually quite junior. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, you know, I've had to interview so many times, and, and it's just by luck my personality uh, just kind of worked for interviews <laughs> uh, because yeah. it, it was just I, I find it talking to people is very easy to mm. sort of find an angle where I can actually talk to them more on a more personal level and they end up liking me as a person mm -hmm. and then they kind of you know the work obviously has to be there I'm not saying like you can't you don't know how to yeah, do the work and I mean I mean the, the, the and, that, and that's what you know being prepared is all yeah. about right showing them that you can do the work yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. if you already got an interview that means that you're yeah your work is up to par they're interested in you right but it doesn't mean that you are guaranteed the job right it's yeah. just have you ever had an interview go bad yeah i was just going to ask about that like what do you do if you're really getting the vibe during the interview that this is going south like something is not working well either it's like i mean maybe i mean uh, you have to kind of figure out what's going on while you're doing the interview right you have to figure out okay is has it ever gone bad for you um con i don't think it's ever gone bad i think i had just a lot of very strange um experiences i think i mean mostly they've been good um and l because i added that point about your interviewer is, is a reflection of how the company works as a whole that without any exception the best companies I worked for were always, they were a, a positive experience right from the get go. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there are some where it was okay. And then it got really bad work, working for them, but there was strange, there was strange, uh, nothing ever went like super bad where you just like, okay, I can't stand talking to this person anymore kind of thing, because I'm, I'm trying my best to stay respectful and everything up until right the end. And, I mean, usually I know within the first five to 10 minutes if this is going to work out or not. If I, if I want to work for this company or if they want to work with me, either it's a complete um, a mismatching of expectations, which usually is what it comes down to, whether they didn't do their research properly, properly. maybe I didn't do my research properly into what they were expecting or they mm -hmm. like, sometimes you get like, oh, we want a 3D artist. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not a 3D artist. Sometimes I had interviews with like, where I could tell that the other side wasn't prepared at all, which drives me actually crazy. Like I hate mm -hmm. that when you put a lot of effort into They're it. They're looking at a piece of paper going, oh, you, your name is uh, yeah, yeah. Like, Jan? Yeah, Jan? yeah. yeah. I, I had that before <laughs> where like um, we scheduled an interview and then I showed up and I sit in the office and for half an hour, nothing. 
I'm like, mm. so, so what's going on? And then suddenly, but that also tells you about them. Yeah. Right? So and suddenly the, the HR is scurrying and it's like, oh, t sorry, sorry. I think I, I messed up the timing or whatever.H, somebody will come. And then somebody came in <laughs> somebody and <will> he's <laughs> like, oh, sorry, the art director is busy. Uh, uh, I'm just going to ask you a few questions. And I'm like, who, who are you? And it was like some technical director, blah, 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 who had no idea about art. And he was just looking at my CV and, and he had no idea what to ask. And it was just, it's just the worst. It's just like, they don't, they don't want to talk to you. They don't have time. They're not prepared. They don't know who you are. Um, and you just waste like half a day going there, being prepared and everything. And then like a week later, I was asked to come there again. And I'm like, oh, like, seriously? Did you go? Yeah, yeah I, go and I went and then oh. I went like, oh, I think man. three more times. Um, but just like various people so it, it really drains you if you like if you have to travel far if you have if it, it's actually great if you have a long interview day it's fantastic because you can just get it all done but mm. if they ask you like on four different dates at different times to interview with different people and half of them are not prepared and they don't know what they what they're doing there and they're just being pulled in so it looks cool i have no idea right Uh, I've been sitting in a room with like four people and two of them clearly did not want to be there. And I'm like, that will happen to you as well. I mean, what do you do then, right? I mean, again, you have no mm, other choice yeah. but to be polite, endure it and try to do your best of ability to answer their question and and stay professional, right? And and even though it's driving you nuts and it's a complete waste of yeah. time, but it's this will happen a lot. This will happen a lot. Yeah. Um, again, the best you can do is you are prepared, What, whatever the other side is. If they're not prepared, then that's on them. And yeah, it's a reflection of probably what working at that company will be like. Yeah. Well, I mean, for me personally, I, 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 I want to say, you know, the, I just want to end the video with some of my pet cool, peeves. Cool, cool. <laughs> Or just, just a funny story, right? Yeah, Because please. truthfully, I have actually interviewed a lot of people mm. because... Um, You know, the, you know, from working at the orphanage as a matte painting supervisor or art director at Sony or just all these places that I had to look at reels and interview and oh, all right. that. So you were the other I side. Mean, I've yeah. Had, yeah. So I've had people come in who who are just like they'll talk to you like they're like laying back <sighs> and and yeah. and they're like, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I'm like, like, I don't care how good your work is. That's a no. Like, I, I already know. Like, I was really hard. Because, I mean, I, I didn't say it right then and there because I, I, al I also respect that person. Mm. But at the end, I was like, I don't want to work with somebody who's going to act like that because mm. I'm going to have to be their lead. Yeah. Like, I don't want that. Mm. You know, I've had people who um, didn't talk at all. And at that time, I'll tell you, I didn't, I didn't, you know, this is a long time ago, like f maybe 12, 13, 14, 15 years mm. ago, something like that. But, uh, you know, for me, I didn't understand introverts. Mm. I didn't understand people who, ha who had difficulty speaking because mm. I thought everybody was like me. Mm. Uh, you can talk. What's the problem, man? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I was just kind of not very enlightened that way. I just, mm. I was an idiot. Uh, and, and so I'm like, well, if you don't talk, well, then that's your problem. So I didn't mm. understand that. And that's why, you know, like today, I try to make it such a point to say, if you're an introvert, here's what you can do. And, and, and just for introverts, I think a lot of times you can also come up, if you're really anxious and nervous, you can tell them. Mm. You can actually be honest and say, you know, this is very difficult or this is, um, I'm very nervous. Mm. And, and people will understand, you know, they won't, you know, because they don't understand why you're being awkward, right? They yeah. don't understand. Mm. And they'll just think, is it just this person is disinterested? Yeah. Or doesn't want to talk? Right. Or is it because they're just really nervous? Uh, but if you tell them, hey, I'm really nervous, sorry, um, but, you know, I, I'm going to try, you know, and, and, and they, they'll understand. Mm -hmm. um, but back then, I didn't know. I was like, oh, you don't talk? What's your problem? <laughs> you know, and, and I didn't know to, to understand that. So that part of it, that's why I make it such a point now to say, hey, There are different personalities out there, mm -hmm. but there are some of those personalities that they come in, they go, Hey dude, what's up? And I'm like, 
uh, no, I'm not your dude. <laughs> like, I don't know you. <laughs> yeah. Why are you calling me your dude? Yeah, I'm d- that is off-putting. Mm. And, but uh, I, I notice that even nowadays, a lot of people, they just they come right out and go, dude. And I'm like, yeah. Y- you know, like, like I, I've had people um, write me emails to, 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 hey, dude, can you mentor me? <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> yeah, you don't like yeah. a little respect would be nice because I'm not going to call them, dude. I mean, th- it doesn't have to be your highness or sir, but just a, it's comes down to basic etiquette, right? Just call you me don't, my, by my you name. Don't, uh, just talk to people like that, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't. Maybe I'm too too old. I, I think my biggest pet peeve was just basically just the people who came in there with with an attitude of mm. like they, there's no respect you know, for the, the position that they're, you know, mm. they're trying to go for. And, and for me, I, I found that to be a, a real big turnoff. Do you think it's um, because, I mean, do you think it's because of the, the job of an artist or uh, that maybe people think it's like a cool dude kind of job where uh, you're all free to do whatever and you can run around in... in well, I mean, personally, I don't really know. I don't know. I don't know why, but I can say that uh, I was actually hiring somebody from my team. So it would be somebody I would want to work with. So if you're going to come in like that, I probably I'm not going to want to work with you mm-hmm. because I don't think I can stand someone who just came in every day. Go, hey, dude, what's up, man? You know, mm-hmm. and just keep saying that. But, you know, I, I feel like there's friendly uh, work and but there's also respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and maybe I'm just too old school. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it could be. But I, I tend to like that because I think it's professional. Yeah, I, I never called yeah. my, my uh, you know, like my bosses. I don't call them dude. Yeah. You know, I just don't do that. Like, I don't go call Doug Chang. Hey, dude, what's up? You know, I don't do that. Yeah. I mean, there's a, it doesn't mean we all have to be stiffs or whatever, right? But I think there needs to be just a, a basic a basic level of etiquette and politeness uh, to, yeah. to I- within the people. And, and maybe if you like really good buddies over time and you bond over personal yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, that's different. That's different, right? <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, even though you're all artists and you're free spirits or whatever, right? There needs to be a basic level of professionalism, of, et- of etiquette, so that everybody can, can work efficiently and good together, right? Because what you're working on is not like some fun freebie thing it's a it's massive and you're gonna see each other multi, a lot multi-million dollar projects right and nobody's there to waste any time and everybody exactly. everybody that i know all the uh, all our peers i think they they all have that or the ones that really ha- have gotten far up the the far in their in their um career i think they all just have they're all just nice pleasant respectful people they all have that basic thing right um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, another uh, funny story was when I was at the orphanage, and you know, you we were hiring for mat painters, and and this was an, a phone interview I did, and you know, a lot of mat painters were known to be a little bit of a prima donna. Really? Uh, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and and um, I was talking to this one artist, and you know, he was like, I was like, well, you know, we we're looking for somebody for this show, and you know, tell me a little bit about you know, sort of you know, how you, you know, whatever, uh, do stuff. And, you know, he would be like, well, you're going to have to ask me better than that. And, you know, <laughs> like I, I need this and I need that. And I need, I was like, and I need you to get off the phone right now because <laughs> I'm not hiring you because, but it was a lot of more like I, 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 mm-hmm. it was, he didn't, he had all of these demands and, and I was like, wow, that's just, I, that's like a worst case scenario. Like I don't ever want to work. With, and he was good though. He was a mm. really good map painter. But uh, then I went uh, to the, like the director and I said, I said, I can't hire this person. Mm-hmm. Like, I know we need somebody, mm. but I'd rather work overtime than hire this person. Cause you know, wow. it's going to be trouble. And then there was another person that just couldn't stop swearing. Okay. He that's just kept going beep beep beep. Like, <laughs> that's just part of his speech. It was yeah. part of his speech, uh, and he just goes, "Oh yeah, man." You know, like instead of "dude," he would just you know s- duplicate it. You know, with like swear words, and I'm oh like, "Oh God. man, that's it gets on your nerves." It's like, come on, yeah, yeah, this is unprofessional. So, in the end, you know, I think these are just sort of some funny stories. But I mean, I've been on the hiring side a lot, mm-hmm. and and I really feel like. The stuff that's why today I wrote so much because I feel like some of this stuff really works 
and really shows respect mm. um, and shows your interest and your p- character and personality. Mm. And that's what they're hiring. I mean, obviously, your work, hopefully, I mean, you if you wouldn't be in the interview if they didn't think you could do the work. Yeah. But they're, they're, the interview is really to see who you are as a person and whether you can fit into their culture. Right, right. So be honest and see if you like their culture right. and whether you can fit in. Sounds good. Well, let's uh, wrap up yeah. this episode for today. Um, I think it was a great discussion. Um, as usual, if you have any suggestions, please let us know. If you like this episode, please like, comment, subscribe uh, to this video and, here and on and YouTube. I think and uh, why are you yeah, interrupting one, one me? One more thing. So, yeah, because <laughs> I got to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because I, I didn't want you to just hit stop. Um, I was uh, going to cut you off. Please, uh, to, to anybody who finds this useful, to share it. Because I think... Right. I would really want this to get out there because I think it's really good information. Mm. Um, but it, it's for a lot of people, I think they, they're not aware that, you know, if you don't share it, a lot of people don't see it. That um, is true. And so, yeah, that would be great if you found it useful. That's wise words in the end. Um, so we all are going to try to learn to listen to ourselves and to our partners better. And, uh, I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right. Bye.